Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software and on today's video I'm going to show you how to install Eclipse. In this video I'm first going to show you how to install a fresh version of Eclipse uh, as if you were getting a new computer and in the second portion of the video I'll show you how to update Eclipse if you already have an old version of Eclipse. The first step to installing Eclipse is to go to our website at eclipsecat.com. Once you're on our website, you'll need to log in with your username and password. If you don't already have a username and password, you can click on Create New Account to create an account to log in with. Once your account has been finalized, you'll get an email letting you know that it's ready. I'm going to go ahead and log in with our guest account for this example. Once you're logged in, you can go to Support, Downloads, and then Eclipse to download the version of Eclipse that you wish. We always have multiple versions of Eclipse available for download on our website, so you can get whichever version you require to work with whoever you need to work with. The Eclipse files are always listed in bold as Eclipse Release Full Install, and it'll tell you the version number. And so we see here that I have Total Eclipse 90029, 7007, and 80004, and they are all full installs available for download. I'm going to go ahead and install version 9 for this example. So I'll click on Eclipse Setup.exe, or I can click on Download on the right, either is fine. In this browser and in most browsers, the file is automatically downloading in the bottom left-hand corner of my screen. However, if you're prompted to run or save the file, you want to make sure that you always choose to save the file. Once the file is done saving, you can usually just click on it down here. Once the file is completed downloading, most browsers will run a security scan, and that's what's happening right now. It's just making sure that the file is safe. Once it's finished with the security scan, I can click on Open File to open this file. If I was using Google Chrome, it would be in the same place, and I can just click on the same thing to open it. If for some reason you're unable to locate your download after it's done saving, you can always hit Control J to see all of your downloads if you don't see the download that you have started in the lower left of your screen anymore. When I press Control J, it opens up my list of downloads, and we see that I have my Eclipse setup.exe, so I can click on that to run it. And this process can sometimes take a few minutes, depending on your computer. The first thing that'll come up will be the Windows User Account Control screen. And you may not be able to see that in the video. It may come up as just a black screen. Unfortunately, there are some things that aren't recordable through Windows. So I've gotten the User Account Control window message, and I'll press Yes. And now I can choose the language that I want to install in. This is what will control the default spelling dictionaries that you use when you install Eclipse. You want to choose the language that you plan to translate in. So I will choose English and press OK. The next window that you see allows you to choose the flavor of Eclipse that you wish to install. You can choose from the standard Eclipse edition. AccuCap, which is for captioners, Vox, which is for voice reporters, or AccuCap Vox, which is for voice captioners. Select the version that you want and hit Next. I'm going to choose Eclipse. I'll press Next once again. And now I will accept the terms of the license agreement and press Next a third time. Next one more time. And now I can press Install to actually begin the installation process. and the installer automatically creates a desktop icon for Eclipse. And once the installer is completely finished, I'm presented with a finish button and two other options. I can launch Eclipse version 9 and also play the What's New video. The What's New video will show you all of the new features that are available in Eclipse. If you don't want to watch it as soon as you're done doing the install, you can always just uncheck this and access it through help vis or support visualizer topics uh, once you're in Eclipse. So I'll go ahead and I'll leave launch Eclipse version 9 checked. With version 9 checked, I'm going to go ahead and click finish and it should try to open up version 9. Now since I don't have a hardware key and I don't have my keyless license installed yet, it's looking for a key and it'll prompt me to install a passcode. 
Now I do have a keyless license though, so I'm going to install that instead. I'll press cancel out of this window and I don't need to worry about installing the HASP hardware key drivers since I don't have a hardware key. And once Eclipse is closed, I can open up my email. And I have a license file from Advantage Software that I can save to use with Eclipse. So if I open this email, I see that it has some instructions and it says to save the Eclipse license file to my desktop and then run Eclipse. So I'm going to hover over the Eclipse license file and click on the download button. And once it downloads, I'm going to click on the little button to for more options and choose show in folder. After clicking show in folder, I'm brought to my downloads folder and you see that I have my eclipse.lic file here. However, the email says that it needs to be saved to my desktop. So I'm going to right click on it, choose copy, and then click on desktop either under quick access or under this PC. And then I can right click and hit paste to put the license on my desktop. The license should be called either just Eclipse or Eclipse.lic depending on if you have file extensions turned on. And it shouldn't have a number on it. It shouldn't be Eclipse Paren 1 or Paren 2. It should just be Eclipse or Eclipse.lic. Once the file has been saved to your desktop, you can see it here. I can open up Eclipse to install the keyless license. When I open up Eclipse, it tells me that the license file from the desktop has been found and asks me if I want to install and activate the license. I'll press yes. And since I don't have any other Windows users, that's all that I have to do in order to install my keyless license. If there was another Windows user on this computer, I would get a message that asked me if I wanted to install it for all Windows users or only the Windows user that I am utilizing. You always want to choose current user on that window um, if you do get it. However, it's not abnormal to not get that second message. Once you're in Eclipse, it'll prompt you to insert your name. Even if you have settings from another computer, you want to do this before you move them over. You need a, your first name and your last name, and then you can hit Next. And this is where you can sh choose the short name that Eclipse will call you. If you do have settings from another computer, it's recommended that you just use the same short name that you use on the other computer. On my other computer, I use Ashley, so I'll just leave it as Ashley and hit Next. After I hit next, I'm in Eclipse and I'm ready to get started and install my settings and dictionaries to start working. So in the next part of the video, I'll show you how to upgrade from an old version of Eclipse to a newer version and what options you have when you do that. If you already have a version of Eclipse and you'd like to update to the newest version, it's a simple and straight, so straightforward process. Uh, in this example, I have Eclipse version 8 on this computer. I can go to help and about Eclipse and you see that my license is, my license is installed, my authorization is T, and I have version 8005. So I want to go ahead and upgrade this to version 8, uh, version 90029. So I'm going to first close Eclipse. It's important that whenever you're installing a new version of Eclipse, you close any existing versions that you have. And I'm going to open up our website at EclipseCat.com. And I'm still on the download section from previous in the video, but just as a refresher, you can access the downloads by going to Support, Downloads, and then Eclipse. So since I have version 8 and I want to upgrade to version 9, I'm going to download Total Eclipse 90029 Release Full Install. I'll click on Eclipse Setup.exe, but you can also click on Download. Once the download is completed, you can click on it to open it. And I'll show you how this upgrade differs from a fresh install. So I've gotten the user account control message and I'm going to go ahead and hit yes to allow Eclipse to make changes to my computer. And again, I'm going to choose my language. Okay, and I'll choose the flavor of Eclipse that I want to install, and I'll just choose the regular Eclipse again. Next, I accept Next, Next, and Install. And it's at this point in the installer where I'm asked if I would like to retain a copy of version 8 or not. If you choose No, you'll upgrade completely to version 9 and you will no longer have version 8 on your computer. And if you choose Yes, you'll have an icon on your desktop for each version. In this example, I'll go ahead and choose Yes.
and you'll see that Eclipse has removed the version 8 icon from the upper left of my screen. And during the install process, it will retur return the V8 icon as well as the new V9 icon to the desktop. You won't have to take any special action in order to continue to access both versions. Okay, and you see that both icons have returned to the desktop, so that's an indicator that the installer is close to done. Okay, and as in the regular install video, I still get the options to play what's new or launch version 9. I'll go ahead and uncheck both. And now, um, one thing that's important if you're going to use two versions of Eclipse at the same time, it's important that you don't use the same INI version in both I, the same INI file in both versions. Uh, there are some settings that exist in version 9 that simply don't exist in version 8, and so if you use a version 9 user in V8, those settings may just be removed. So what I'm going to do is open up Eclipse version 8, and I'll check the boxes to allow Eclipse to communicate through my networks and hit allow access. You may get that from time to time after you install new updates. And then I'll choose my user INI file and press OK. And I'm going to make a copy of this for use in version 9. So I'm going to go to my user settings under Alt U and I'm going to hit save settings and I'm going to call the new user Ashley V9. And then I'll press OK and OK. And now if I go back to Alt U and load settings, I have my original Ashley user for version 8 and my Ashley V9 that I can use in version 9. And so if I open up version 9, I can make sure that I always choose the V9 user instead of the V8 user. And that'll make sure that any changes I make that are specific to version 9 are always retained. And you only need to do this if you actually intend to use both versions. If you're only going to use the new version, there's no real reason to retain version 8. If As long as you and your Scopus are on at least version 5, you'll all be able to work on each, on each other's files whether you're on version 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. There's no structural difference in the files, and so they are cross-compatible amongst all of those versions. If you need to work with someone on a much older version, you can always use RTFs. If you're using Connection Magic, it is important to remember that you and your Scopus should always be on the same version of Eclipse. But other than that, you can typically just stay on the most recent version and not have to worry about utilizing multiple versions. If you're installing a new version of Eclipse for the first time, your keyless license or USB hardware key may require activation for that version. You can call us during business hours to activate your keyless license before or after installing the update. And if you have a USB hardware key, um, you'll need to install the Eclipse update before we can update the hardware key. Tech support is available to assist with installs all day, every day. You can contact us at 800-800-1759 or 772-288-3266 if you require any assistance with installing. If you need assistance outside of business hours with an upgrade or install, tech support can still help you and make sure that you're ready to work even if you need to install when client services is not available. As always, our Anytime 24-7 support is available for installs and any other questions. If you need help, please don't hesitate to call us or email us at support at eclipsecat.com. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and like the video if you enjoyed it.